So my name is Jacob Applebaum and I'm currently a German resident. I work as an investigative journalist and also as a free software developer. The issue of mass surveillance is very important to me specifically because it impacts my ability to do independent investigative journalism. It's also the case that working on free software has become a very political issue and specifically because I work on anonymity, specifically on circumvention technologies about surveillance where I believe that each person has the right to read and the right to speak freely and they should be able to do that without fear of surveillance and without fear of tampering. It's for this reason that mass surveillance is such an important issue to me. It's very difficult for sources to contact me. It's very difficult for sources to leave a life behind, essentially, which is the choice they have to make when they contact someone to talk about these topics. If they wanted to talk about these topics in a world where there wasn't mass surveillance, it would be possible for them to simply talk about a thing without having to choose between the topic and the rest of their life. And at the moment, because of mass surveillance, people have to make very serious, very heavy decisions. Mass surveillance impacts everyday, regular people, in particular because the news that we have, it's changed when people are not able to talk to journalists about the things that they work on, or about the things that they think about, or about the things that they've learned about and that they have concerns about. There are serious consequences. Mass surveillance has, in the past, been used for horrible atrocities and crimes against humanity. One of the first big data projects that Europe has ever had, in fact, is the Second World War. Deutsche Homag, which is a subsidiary of IBM, or was during the Second World War, is exactly the kind of company that is almost irrelevant in a big data world because it doesn't have enough data. It isn't powerful enough. But that data was used to eradicate millions of people. And it was only because this data was available that such things were able to be done with such efficiency. In fact, most of the efficiency came from the data collection, from the veracity of that information, and from the necessity, the total nature of that information. Without that information, the systems would operate differently. Which is not to say that a crisis can be averted in itself. It is to say, however, that the crisis changes with more information, and not necessarily for the better. Every time we choose spying, what we choose also is to ensure that someone other than a relevant court and a relevant jurisdiction, that someone else will be able to make choices about what is done with that data and who data is collected on, who it is collected for. So whenever you choose, for example, to spy on your citizens, you must remember that you're also choosing to allow unregulated bodies like the National Security Agency in the United States to spy on your citizens as well. When you build insecure systems, you ensure that people will exploit them. And not just people who are well-meaning, not just people with good intentions, not just people who do operate under the rule of law. So mass surveillance creates mass fear. It creates mass censorship, self-censorship, but also technical censorship of other kinds. So it's very important to reject mass surveillance. And it's very important to ensure that due process of law is something that happens where particular specific instances will be what causes an investigation, not a total surveillance society where every single person is always under suspicion at all times. It's really important to be able to take concrete action, and I don't know who you might be interested in voting for, but I can't vote. I, as a resident of Germany and as a U.S. citizen, I have no real representation here in Europe. So what I would say is if you agree with me about these things, I hope that you will stand in solidarity with your privileges and use those privileges in service of a more just world. I think that this is a pretty good idea. I agree with everything on it, this wepromise.eu. I think that it's an interesting idea to have due process. and. In theory, this is one of the fundamental cornerstones of the Council of Europe and the European Parliament and of liberal democracy itself. So if you care about issues of mass surveillance, of censorship, of so-called targeted surveillance, of so-called lawful interception, if you care about freedom of information, about copyright reform, if you care about a technological world having a sound and reasonable basis where people are arguing based on data and facts rather than on innuendo and fear politics, then I think it's important to look for candidates that care about these issues and that commit to make these kinds of promises. Whether or not such a candidate exists, I don't know. But you should do the research to find out. And voting is one of the things that can be done. Another thing is to produce free software, to use free software, and simply to register your displeasure and your concerns about these topics. Because there's a huge democratic debate that needs to take place. And we are only at the beginning of that debate. So merely speaking up and merely addressing these things as topics for civil debate are absolutely important. And so if you find a candidate in the European Parliament's elections, I think that that's important. You should go with it. You should find the right person that represents you. And hopefully it comes to this 
where we have these discussions, where we have them in these places of justice, in these places where we make laws, in these places where we might hope to find some solutions or some roads to walk down in the future as we deal with the internet and we deal with civil society and how that is ultimately actually the internet at the same time. Mm -hmm.